closed my mouth more. Tried to be soft, prettier, less awake. Fasted for 60 days. Wore white. Abstained from mirrors. Abstained from sex. Slowly did not speak another word. In that time, my hair, I grew past my ankles. I slept on a mat on a floor. I swallowed a sword. I levitated. Went to the basement. Confessed my sins and was baptized in a river. Got on my knees and said amen and said I mean. I whipped my own back and asked for dominion at your feet. I threw myself into a volcano. I drank the blood and drank the wine. I sat alone and begged and bent at the waist for God. I crossed myself and thought I saw the devil. I grew thick in skin on my feet. I bathed in bleach and plugged my menses with pages from the holy book. But still inside me, coiled deep, was the need to know. Are you cheating, cheating on me? Are you cheating on me? Orson Shire, a 33-year-old aspiring poet whose life has changed drastically through poetry. In collaboration with Beyonce, Shire composed the poetry for the Peabody award-winning visual album Lemonade and the Disney picture Black is King. Orson was the first young poet laureate of London back in 2014 and was the Royal Society of Literature's youngest member. Two of the first chapter books she has written include Teaching My Mother How to Give Birth, and Her Blue Body. Her work is featured in the Penguin Modern Poet series and received the inaugural International African Poetry Prize shortly after she started writing poems. She's frequently referred to as a well-known internet poet who rose to prominence after publishing her work on Tumblr and Twitter. Her poem, For Difficult Women to Love, went viral upon its publication and striked her uprising. Women who are difficult to love. You are a horse running alone, and he tries to tame you. Compares you to an impossible highway, to a burning house, says you are blinding him, that he could never leave you, forget you, want anything but you. You dizzy him. You are unbearable. Every woman before or after you is doused in your name. You fill his mouth, his teeth, ache with the memory of taste, his body, just a long shadow seeking yours, but you are always too intense, frightening in the way that you want him, unashamed and sacrificial, he tells you that no man can live up to the one who lives in your head, and you try to change, don't you, close your mouth. Softer, prettier, less volatile, less awake. But even when sleeping, you could feel him traveling away from you in his dream. So you can't make homes out of human beings. Someone should have already told you that. And if he wants to leave, then let him leave. You are terrifying and strange and beautiful. Something not everyone knows how to love. I feel like, for me personally, 
so if I, there were certain things if I didn't do at that age, I don't think I ever would have done. She is a Somali-born British poet and writer born in Nairobi, Kenya, and grew up in London, England. She was born on August 1st, 1988 in Kenya and migrated to England with her family at the age of one. She grew up in London's diverse Brent area. She now lives in Los Angeles, California with her husband and two children. Shire began her career in poetry at a young age. She was categorized as a web poet as she used social media as her main platform. Since then, she has become more known and seen as a formal publisher in the industry. Shire writes on more than simply love, sorrow, and betrayal. Many important issues are also addressed by the poet, which helps her stand out from others. She writes about violence against women, refugees, war, as well as African dysphoria. Her poetry provides comfort when a terrible tragedy occurs. Shire draws on her own personal experiences as well as the experiences of others close to her. She quotes, I either know or I am every person I have written about, for or as, but I do imagine them in their most intimate settings. She adds that her major interest is writing about and for individuals who are often overlooked, such as immigrants and refugees, as well as other oppressed minorities. Her work is character driven. Each poem is a new character and a new story. Shire is also quoted as saying, I also navigate a lot through memory, my memories and other people's memories, trying to essentially just make sense of stuff. She expresses her love through her poems. Her family counts on her to share their experiences through her writing. They will tell her stories of their past to raise inspiration for her work. Her poetry reflects her heritage, addressing topics such as immigration, gender, identity, and life she's never lived in Somalia, where she only visited a few years ago. She's overall a touching and unique poet that inspires many. I didn't really have the time or even the like foresight to really think about what is it that I'm sharing? How is it going to come across? Do I care about what people think? I just had that young passion of um, being uh, like it's youthful dreams and hopes and aspirations. And around that time, things can happen to you that will um, like can completely alter the rest of your trajectory, like everything that you're going to amount to. Backwards for my brother Saad Shira. The poem can start with him walking backwards into a room. That's how we bring dad back. He takes off his jacket and sits down for the rest of his life. I can make the blood run back up my nose, ants rushing into a hole. We grow into smaller bodies. My breasts disappear, your cheeks soften, teeth sink back into gums. I can make us loved. Just say the word. Give them stumps for hands if even once they try to touch us without consent. I can make the poem and make it disappear. Stepdad spits liquor back into glass. Mom's body rolls back up the stairs. The bone pops back into place. Maybe she keeps the baby. Maybe we're okay, kid. I'll rewrite this whole life, and this time there will be so much love you won't be able to see beyond it. You won't be able to see beyond it. I'll rewrite this whole life, and this time there will be so much love. Maybe we're okay, kid. Maybe she keeps the baby. Mum's body rolls back up the stairs. The bone pops back into place. Stepdad spits liquor back into glass. I can write the poem and make it disappear. Give them stumps for hands if even once they try to touch us without consent. I can make us loved. Just say the word. Your cheeks soften, teeth sink back into gums. My breasts disappear. I can make the blood run back up my nose. Ants rushing into a hole and that's how we bring dad back. He takes off his jacket, sits down for the rest of his life. The poem
poem can start with him walking backwards into a room. Thank you. Backwards, a movement in time away from one's front. The feeling of turning back time and going backwards in life to live it better. The poem Backwards by Warsan Shear is about the reflection of Shear's family life as her father walked out on her and her siblings. It's the interpretation that she wants to move backwards to the time where her father was in her life. The poem covers and talks about themes of family, love, and domestic abuse in an unusual way. Maybe we're okay, kid. I'll rewrite this whole life and this time there'll be so much love you won't be able to see beyond it. She feels that by writing this poem, all the pain from the past would disappear and make them feel loved. Although this, the poem covers a variety of themes, it mainly gravitates towards the theme of family, the thought that if her family stayed as a whole, she wouldn't have experienced the things she did. She would not have been physically, emotionally, or sexually abused. Give them stumps for hands, if even once they touched us without consent. By talking about the idea of love and how deprived she was of it, makes it clear that she wishes she could have had it better. Strong words used in this poem include blood and sink. Ones that reoccur are love and back. These are important words that Shire has used as it emphasizes the pain and emotion she has experienced as a kid. Metaphors like walking backwards into a room or ants rushing into a hole are used which each have different meanings than what they actually mean in text. The comparison of ants going into a hole in the poem to her actual life refers to going to a state of chaos than going back to a routine. This poem is written in free verse. It isn't rhymed and isn't organized. It has a three line meter with a rhythmic sequence every three lines. Although the poem appears to be mosaic, divided into several pieces that join together to make a broken whole. Souvenir. I think I brought the war with me on my skin. A shroud circling my skull, matter under my nails. It sits at my feet while I watch TV. I hear its damp breath in the background of every phone call. I feel it sleeping between us in the bed. It lathers my back in the shower. It presses itself against me at the bathroom sink. At night, it holds my hand. I never meet its gaze. One should think a souvenir is something to make you happy. You can argue is a keepsake for a happy memory. Instead, this poem represents a different type of souvenir, not the good memory kind, but rather the kind that brings horror. Warson speaks about the dread of war and the way it imprisons the braves for years after in a state of darkness. Once a person has experienced the horrors of war, they will never forget what happened to them. The poem says, I think I brought the war with me on my skin a shroud, circling my skull, the matter under my nails. This represents the action of not being able to escape the emotion. The poem repeats the lingering and eerie feeling war brings upon an individual. It also states the place the person endures this feeling, repeatedly throughout the text, being the skin, skull, nails, breath, and back. The tone of this poem comes across as dark, representing the sorrow and emotional scars one feels during this time. One thing that makes Warson such an amazing poet is her use of words. She uses powerful diction, including phrases such as war, skull, breath, and pills. The poem also repeats the word it, always referring to something in the text. This something is the emotional PTSD one may have from war. Throughout the poem, almost all lines include metaphors. She writes as if the emotion is actually something physical. For example, when she writes, it lathers my back in the shower. It presses itself against me at the bathroom sink. The emotion one is feeling is obviously not actually doing these things and is just an alliteration. The poem's words flow like a river, every sentence matching the ones before. Although there are no rhymes in this particular reading, it flows just as well as one with. It is structured and arranged to perfection in order to deliver the best outcome to the readers. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well. Your neighbors running faster than you, breath bloody in their throats. And the boy you went to school with who kissed you dizzy behind the old tin factories, holding a gun bigger than his body. You only leave home when home won't let you stay. 
No one leaves home unless home chases you, fire under feet, hot blood in your belly. And even then, you carry the anthem under your breath, only tearing up your passport in airport toilets, sobbing as each mouthful of paper made it clear that you would not be going back. You have to understand, and no one would put their children in a boat unless the sea is safer than the land. No one burns their palms under trains, beneath carriages. No one spends days and nights in the gallbladder of a truck feeding on newspaper unless the miles traveled mean something more than journey. No one crawls under fences, wants to be beaten, wants to be pitied. No one chooses refugee camps or strip searches where your body is left aching or prison because prison is safer than a city of fire and one prison guard in the night is safer than 14 men who look like your father. No one could take it, could stomach it. No one's skin would be tough enough. The go-home blacks, refugees, dirty immigrants, asylum seekers, sucking our country dry, niggas with their hands out. They smell strange, savage, messed up their own country, and now they want to mess up ours? How do the words, dirty looks, roll off your back? And maybe it's because the blow is softer than a limb torn off. Or the words are more tender than 14 men between your legs. Or the insults are easier to swallow than rubble, than bone, than your child's body in pieces. I want to go home. But home is the mouth of a shark. Home is the barrel of a gun. And no one would leave home unless home chased you to the shore. Unless home told you to quicken your legs. Leave your clothes behind. Crawl through the desert. Wade through the oceans. Drown. Save. Be hungry. Beg. Forget pride. Your survival is more important. No one leaves home unless home is a sweaty voice in your ear saying, leave. Run away from me now. I don't know what I've become, but I know that anywhere is safer than here.